for uh, tuning to our channel today. This is Dr. Paul. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, fear chromocytoma. Before I start, I request you to visit my website at uh, www.drpaul.org. That is www.drpaul.org. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, fear chromocytoma, a very common condition. And this condition has serious side effects and complications. And it's one of the fatal conditions if leaves if left untreated. Now, what is fear chromocytoma? It's basically the tumor of adrenal medulla. So the tumors of adrenal medulla, that's, you need to remember that these tumors, they secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. And when those uh, hormones are secreted into the blood, they cause episodic or sustained hypertension. So they affect like 0.1% of patients with uh, hypertension and they account for about 50% of adrenal tumors. And the other thing is most of these tumors are found incidentally, even when patient does not have any symptoms. They may be associated with uh, men, you know, multiple endocrine plasia. And uh, there are different like men one and men two B. So this pheochromocytoma can occur with other tumors like mucosal neuromas and uh, ganglioneuromatosis. And even in one recurring Hazen's disease, you remember cephalic spots and the neurofibromatosis. So van recurring Hazen's disease can present with pheochromocytoma. Even one hepolinda disease, the hemangiomas and the hemangioblastoma of the central nervous system. So these are the conditions that uh, most often cause uh, uh, pheochromocytoma, I mean as uh, an association. And sometimes they can actually come like a familial paraganglionoma syndromes caused by mutations. So sometimes they, they may come by themselves are in association with uh, the syndromes I mentioned. But it can, like 50% of patients, uh, you can actually see it in a CT or an MRI scan as an incidental finding. Now, um, classically, the patient has episodic hypertension associated uh, with uh, the tide of palpitation and headache and sweating. So that is the tired headache palpitations and sweating. They come with these things, but other things like anxiety, weight loss, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, abdominal discomfort, and some of them even present with constipation and uh, visual blurring. Some patients have diarrhea, which may be secondary to the secretion of vasoactive intestinal peptide. So there are myriad of symptoms that can you can see in these patients. So if you do the physical examination, if the patient has an attack, you will see that anxiety and the sweating and pallor. But if the patient does not have symptoms, um, then you will see a, a, an exactly normal patient. You remember this point, the most common feature of pheochromocytoma is hypertension. You see, that is the most common feature. Now, you can also see hyperglycemia because uh, norepinephrine it and epinephrine, they actually increase the glucose production and they decrease the insulin secretion. So, they will have hypertension and hyperglycemia. The other thing is uh, it is 10% malignant, 10% familial, 10% bilateral, 10% multiple, 10% uh, extra adrenal. That's why we call this uh, Mr. 10% tumor. So this is the 10% tumor. So many tens and tens and tens. That's another important point to remember. Plasma-free metanephrines, that is the test. That is the most sensitive test for pheochromocytoma. That is a plasma-free metanephrine. Remember that. Now, laboratory testing. The diagnosis of uh, pheochromocytoma is confirmed. There are two things. Fractionated 24-hour urinary catecholamines and metanephrines measured in the same collection or by fractionated plasma-free metanephrines. So remember those things. The plasma-free metanephrines is the more sensitive test than the urine test. So remember those 
points. Those days, you remember the vanilla malonic uh, acid VMA test we use it to do urinary vanilla malonic acid VMA test is less than still. That's why we are no longer using it. So if you see VMA in your examination, don't get tempted to choose it because that's uh, that's in the past. The new latest uh, tests are plasma-free metanephrine test. Now, measuring plasma-free metanephrine is like 100% uh, sensitive and like 90% specific. So depending on the particular assay, uh, there are many, many things that can give false positive tests. There are so many drugs like uh, tricyclic antidepressants that can give false positive results. So you need to uh, uh, think about patient and stop all medications at least like uh, 24 hours before you do this test. So one year, once you uh, test the biochemical uh, markers, then you go for radiographic tests like CT and MRI. So you exactly localize the tumor by doing a CT and MRI test. Now differential diagnosis. What conditions you usually get this uh, uh, condition confused with? The different, any, anything that causes hypertension can be in the differential diagnosis. Think of all the conditions. Hyperthyroidism can cause uh, hypertension. Anxiety attacks can cause it. Carcinoid syndrome can cause, but you see, in carcinoid syndrome, we measure urinary file HIAA test, right? So that is elevated in carcinoid syndrome. And also, if you do a CT scan in carcinoid syndrome, you will see liver metastasis. So those are the things you need to use in the differential diagnosis. And pheochromocytoma in pregnancy is a deadly thing, half of the mothers half of the fetuses, they die because of pheochromocytoma. So in pregnancy, there are conditions like uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia that can cause hypertension. So the differential diagnosis is, uh, uh, is, is an art based on the symptoms and uh, diagnostic tests. And uh, finally, we need to recognize this condition and uh, recognizing this condition is very, very important. Now, how do you treat uh, pheochromocytoma? There is medical treatment, treatment with uh, alpha adrenergic blocking agents. So alpha adrenergic blocking agents should be started when you diagnose this condition biochemically. Why, why do you do that? To restore the blood volume, which has been depleted by excessive catecholamines, right? These patients are dehydrated. So you need to restore the volume of uh, uh, intravascular fluid. And then to allow the patient to recover from cardiomyopathy because these patients develop cardiomyopathy. So you are doing alpha adrenergic blockers like phenoxybenzamide because it, is, uh, it has such a long duration of action. You use phenoxybenzamide like uh, 10 to 14 days. And after that, uh, patient doesn't need an emergency section, but uh, ultimately the definitive treatment is uh, accession. So you start with alpha adrenergic blockers. When they have uh, uh, well-established, they say we got uh, uh, nasal stuffiness. And so remember these alpha blockers are the first things. Then you can go for beta blockers. Then you can also go for calcium channel blockers. And, uh, uh, so, uh, and also competitive selecting alpha adrenergic blocking agents. So those are the things, doxazosin, prazosin, they can also be used. So remember to start alpha blockers and, uh, in these patients. And uh, that's a very, very important uh, point I wanted to stress this evening. So a hypertensive crisis can happen if you do not uh, treat these patients uh, adequately. And um, opioids should be avoided because they stimulate histamine release and can precipitate a crisis. So there is medical treatment and uh, there is surgical treatment. The definitive treatment, as I said, is uh, surgical treatment when you stop uh, uh, the production of these catecholamines permanently. You can do uh, a, a laparoscopic procedure if the tumors are small, or you can do a you know, laparotomy if the tumors are large. So.
medical treatment and surgical treatment both take place in a pheochromocytoma so that's about pheochromocytoma please feel free to comment and add your own comments to this video and in the in our blog section as I said, uh, I invite you to visit our website www.drpaul.org That is www.drpaul.org And those of you who are taking USMLE uh, Step 2 Clinical Skills I recommend this book, USMLE Smasher So USMLE Smasher, thousands of people across the world They are uh, reading this book and uh, uh, getting encouraged and learning the tips We say all you need is to learn some tips to pass this exam. So I recommend USML Smasher, get this book, and uh, above all, visit our website. Thank you very much.